Hi everyone and welcome to this very special episode of Digital Film Dojo. Today we're going to go over how to do some 3D camera tracking by using some of the footage and some of the assets from CK Productions' latest Breath of the Wild video, the one about the Guardians. If you haven't checked it out, you should probably go check it out right now before you do this video. If you don't want to, well, I guess that's okay. So anyways, like I mentioned on the main channel, this video had a lot of different VFX shots that had a lot of movement in it, which means it required a lot of 3D tracking here in After Effects. And it's really good because the 3D tracker in After Effects has really improved over the years, and it's really helped make these shots get easier and easier over time. So for this video, I'm gonna bring you through the process on how to do an accurate 3D track of one of these shots and composite one of the Guardians in here using Element 3D. Now if you don't have Element 3D, that's okay. You can follow along by placing any other assets that you have into the shot with 3D tracking, or using a solid or text or anything else in After Effects too that can be 3D tracked. So before you dive right into the 3D tracking for a shot, you want to go over the shot and make sure it's ready to track first. And I have a portion of one of the shots here used for one of the turret guardians, and you'll see that the camera kind of goes back and forth and the guardian's going to end up like being around here. And in fact, this is the shot where the Guardian actually explodes. We're not going to do that in this video, but this will be the shot that we'll be tracking. All right, so first off, when you have a shot you need to track, you're going to want to look through it, and you're going to want to see how the shot looks in general. Um, when it comes to moving shots, a lot of the times you're going to want to stabilize it a bit, because there's going to be a few shakes along the way, like you'll see around here. It shakes just a little bit here, and the thing is, we want to do our 3D track, but we don't want a 3D track while the shot still has those shakes in it. So what I'm going to do before I start anything, I'm going to actually go to the effects here and put on a warp stabilizer. And for those of you that don't know, the warp stabilizer will take our shot and it'll try its best to kind of even out those shakes by manipulating some controls within the shot as far as like scale, position, and rotation and whatnot. Sometimes they can be really accurate, but sometimes they don't turn out as well. So we'll see how this one turns out. Okay, so our stabilizing is done here. Looks like it cropped in a little bit, but overall, it looks like it did a pretty good job at smoothing things out. I think So I think that's a pretty acceptable warp stabilizer effect there. So we're going to keep it the way it is. We're not going to affect any of the settings now. Okay, so the next step is to move on to do our 3D motion track. But right before we do that, we're going to have to do one thing. We're going to have to go to our shot here, and we're going to want to pre-compose it and move those attributes to a new composition. The reason we're going to do that is because if we put the motion track on the original shot that has the warp stabilizer function on it, it's going to actually ignore the warp stabilizer and it's going to 3D motion track this shot with the shakes in it. And what will happen is when we put our 3D object in later, it's not going to line up correctly. So when you're 3D tracking something, you always want to have a blank plate, a shot or a pre-composed comp that doesn't have any effects like that hooked on it. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the 3D camera tracker in the perspective here. And again, the 3 camera tracker in After Effects has really improved over the years. It hasn't always been the go-to 3D camera tracker for VFX artists, but it's really improved a lot over the past couple years, and people have been using it a lot more instead of having to go to Mocha or Buju or any other type of 3D trackers. It makes things a lot easier when it can just kind of stay in After Effects. You don't have to outsource it to another program. And like I mentioned before in the CK Behind the Scenes video, if you're doing shots that require 3D tracking outside, you're going to want to make sure you have a lot of kind of points of references that are going to be in these shots, whether those be flowers or trees or any types of things. In some instances, you can even, you can even plan your own points of references, like a stick or a pole or a ball or something like that. You just have to keep in mind that you might have to take that out of the shot or you're going to have to cover that in the shot. Okay, so it looks like our 3D track is done. Let's take a look at what we got here. So we got a lot of different points of references here. That's what these little X's are. And you're going to see when we go through, those X's kind of stay in the same spot where they are in the shot, which means we did a pretty nice track here. And we got some tracking back here. We got some tracking in the foreground here. So this is where it's important to know where your 3D object or wherever you're putting in the shot is going to be placed in the shot because that determines where you're going to find your points of references. No matter what points of references you make, it's always going to create the same camera. In fact, if we wanted to, we can go ahead and just make create a camera right now. And it's going to create a camera that's based off of the motion track we made. And any type of stuff that we put in the shot is going to be motion tracked. But what we really want to do, let's undo that. What we really want to do is we want to pick out the spot where our 
3D object is gonna be in the shot. We're gonna to wanna to make a plane or a null object where that's gonna to be to find those points of references for our position. And then we're gonna apply that to our 3D object later. So we're gonna look in the shot and we're gonna determine where our thing's gonna be. Our 3D object's gonna be right about, I would say right about here. So we're gonna kinda of highlight the axes that are in this, to ter this territory here. Maybe just these guys right here. And we're gonna, I'm gonna create a solid and a camera. What that's gonna do is that's gonna make a solid that's on our shot here. And look at that, it's actually 3D tracked in here. We already have a 3D tracked object in our shot automatically. And if we look at the coordinates here, these are the position coordinates that we're, that we're looking for. And these are the ones we're gonna apply to our 3D object when we put it in here. Now, if this concept is kind of is seeming kind of confusing, let's try to put things in perspective a bit, literally. These coordinates of the position apply for an object that's in this general area of the shot. What the 3D camera tracker kind of does it is it analyzes your shots and determines where a 3D object would end up being in the shot based on their coordinates. So let's say we made another solid here. Let's do a different colored solid. Let's do a red solid in here. Place it in and just make it a 3D object just on these regular position points here. Let's see where it ends up. If you put it at a quarter or third quality, it's gonna go a lot faster. And if we kind of bring this, if we kind of make this smaller a bit to see it a little better. Now, this is when these points really matter because take a look at the red solid compared to the purple one. It's moving a lot different because within this 3D camera scene, it's actually a lot closer to the quote unquote camera. And if you think about it in real life, something that's closer to the camera on a real life set would move differently than something that's a little farther away. Movements might be a little bit more drastic because it's obscuring the camera a bit more. While something farther away, might, the movements might not be as drastic. Let's try to do, let's try to put one that's a little farther away. Let's make this green solid and make that a 3D object. And you can tell when something is farther away or closer based on the Z coordinates here. We'll hide this green one for now, look at the red one. The red one's at zero, and the purple one is at over 14,000, while this part is zero, which means something way back here could be like 50,000 or no, hundreds of thousands. Let's take our green one and push it back a bit. Let's see how far we can make it go. We're gonna push it way back, even farther back than the purple one, and see how it's affected. About 46,000 or so. Uh, this red one now we're gonna see that it's more it's moving more in line with the stuff that's in the back here which is actually looking pretty accurate and this is pretty handy too because if we want to if we had multiple objects in the scene or an object moving from one point to another let's say there is an object moving from back here to here maybe a particle effect or something and we'd have a co some coordinates of solids back here and coordinates of solids back up here and we'd know what positions values to use when we're animating those things. In fact, if you look at the camera tracker, you're gonna see some, you're gonna see some of these trackers come up over here. We can actually make another solid if we want to make another official point of reference made by the camera. And there, this other green one has tracking data in the position that puts it in line with this tree here. So pretty cool stuff if you think about it. So to put this even into even better perspective, let's get rid of these tracking points that we don't need. And let's put in a text layer. Before we move on to doing the 3D object, let's do something that we can create directly in After Effects here. There's something random here, it doesn't really matter what we type. This is gonna do 3D track. And take your text, go ahead and make it a 3D object. You'll see it first, it's not gonna look, it's not gonna look right because it doesn't have the right point of reference here. So all we have to do is take this position data, copy it, and apply it to our text. Now the first thing you're gonna see is yes, yes, it's way too small. All we have to do 
is since it is a text layer, we can make it as large as we need to make it. Then we have it here. We can push it up a bit, a little bit. And we have a pretty accurate 3D track. The one thing you want to be careful with, if you're going to readjust the position of it here, is you don't want to click on your Z axis because that's going to move it to a spot where you don't necessarily want it. It's going to be tracking in a different location. So we can take that, you know, we can rotate it, make it look like it's standing up. You can do a lot of things like add some shadow and whatnot. But yeah, it's a pretty pretty cool feature that you can do. And if you really get the hang of this, you can do a lot of cool effects when it comes to 3D tracking with text. You know, you can have it animate in, you can have other solids and other stuff animating with it. All right, let's go to the main attraction here. Let's go ahead and add in our 3D object, which will be the turret. So I'm gonna make a new solid here. I'm gonna add my element 3D and I'm gonna add in the turret. There it is. There is our turret. Now in this episode, we're not gonna really go into the texturing of the stuff. That's a whole nother process that we have to go through. So we're just gonna use the 3D object in here the way it is. And you're gonna see again, when we put it in here, it's gonna have its values kind of zeroed out. So it's gonna be way too far in front. So all we have to do is kind of do the same thing we did with the text. Bring in our world transform options here for element 3D and Copy and paste our position coordinates here accordingly. So Z, we'll go in Z. Y, we'll go in Y. And X, we'll go in X. All right, and it's found its spot here. Not exactly where we want it to be. So let's go ahead and move it up with our Y and our X to where we want it to be. Put on the motion blur to make it look a little smoother and there we go the track is looking pretty good now all we have to do is kind of scale it up and move it around and kind of mess with our settings here with our rotation and our position to kind of get it angled the right way that we want it and element 3d makes this stuff really easy now we're doing this in Element 3D, but we don't necessarily have to do it in Element 3D if we wanted to. You can always take this tracking data that you have with your camera and your coordinates, and you can export it to a project in Cinema 4D if you wanted to, and you can replace and you can put your object in there as well using the same principle. But sometimes it's a little easier to kind of keep it in the same program here using Element 3D and After Effects. Make this a little bigger here. And it's pretty amazing the way it can just do it like that. It can do it so quickly. Obviously this model isn't finished, it's not textured, and it's not colored and completely blended into the shot, but this is basically the process you use when it comes to the actual 3D tracking. And with this data that you have here in the camera set up, you can go ahead and you can add a whole bunch of different stuff in the shot if you wanted to. You can add other text layers, you can add explosions, and other things. Let's just add an explosion in there to be fun. Let's go ahead and put your explosion here. I got one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use, make it a 3D object and go ahead and use these tracking data here. Go ahead and make it larger. Turn that on screen. And we got an explosion in our shot too, for the heck of it. Nice and tracked in. So from here, what you would do is you would go in and you would add some, maybe some shadow over here. You'd make it kind of blend into the shot more. You could add some color correction to it. But as far as 3D tracking, that's the basically the gist of it. It's really a lot simpler of a process than you may think it is, and it's gotten a lot simpler over the years. It's continuing to be a valuable effect for a lot of VFX artists. It's always a lot more convincing when you see some 3D movement in the shot. It's really cool to watch, and it's a really cool process to, to make happen. 
That's why I really like doing VFX. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about 3D camera tracking. In the next coming weeks, I'll be going over a few other things having to do with this video. If you haven't watched this video, I really highly suggest you watch it now. And if you have, go ahead and check out some of the other videos in Digital Film Dojo having to do with other things with editing and visual effects and cinematography all different types of filmmaking. Be sure to subscribe so you can catch when the next video comes out. And feel free to follow me online if you want to see behind the scenes shots of some other projects I'm working on as well. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments. And if you have any suggestions about any other tutorials you might want to see on this channel, go ahead and comment those as well. I'd love to see what you guys are interested in what you want to learn more about. With that, I hope you guys have a nice weekend and I'll see you for the next video. Bye everyone.